Hi guys, in this video I'll show you how to make animation like this with help of Blender 3D and as a bonus tip we're gonna quickly walk through my modeling 3 in SOLIDWORKS. So let's get started. Here we are in Blender and let's be sure that you and me are on the same page. Press AX delete everything. Let's quickly go through our, the, our thin settings for the render engine. I will be using cycles with this much of samples. For the output properties, I will be the standard resolution. Uh, frame rate is 30 frames per second, and the end frame will be 90. Okay, let's quickly add an plane to create an our basic skin environment. Easy to select these two points, Ctrl B. By the way, it's a little bit intermediate blender tutorial so yeah feel free to ask me anything if you don't understand what i'm doing here and let's add an a pad for our model by adding a cylinder let's scale it down to something like this go to the one by press go to the front view by pressing numpad one and go to the depth mode lz select all vertices Move it like this, GZ, move it like this, and it's always a good thing to have a little gap between every object, so move it up just a little. Now, with bottom vertices selected, press Ctrl B and make a bevel here and there, just a slightly beveled stuff. Okay. Let's also add a subdivision modifier, it's not necessary, but I like to have it. And press right mouse and shade size. Uh, now it's time to add our models. Let's go to import. In my case it will be obg file. Go to the folder with your files and wait a little bit for models to be imported. So here it is. Welcome to Frank. Select him in the skin collection 3. Press S divided by 1000, I guess. Yep. He was too big, so we scaled him down. Let's rotate him. Air X minus 90. Great. And let's move it, move him up on our podium. Like this. With a little gap between the Frank and the podium. And also looks like our podium is too small for Frank. S, Shift, Z and scale it like this. Okay. So, if you are working with 3D printed renders like me and you uh, slice it your files with Prusa Slicer sometimes you will have the gaps between the layers and that's not good for render so we need to put something inside of our frame to compensate this uh, in this case I think I can add a simple cylinder inside let's add in a cylinder but if it's not working good you always can add an STL and try to scale it down like this and move it inside of our model so let's go to edit mode, S, Y, and give it more ellipsoid loop, like this. So I'll see to see better what's happening right here. Yeah, and let's move the vertices up. Okay. So it's this ellipsoid will be will not be seen because we hide it inside on our frame so I will explain you later what is happening here and why we do it okay now let's save our file quickly it's very important to save the files and it's time to add the camera and the lighting so let's start with the camera shift a camera it's rotated 
not like with one or two so select the camera press alt g and alt r to restart the location and rotation now rx19 gy move it like this gz little bit gy and roughly position our camera so move your cursor here on the side and split the windows like this scroll here and deselect all of this stuff press zero on your numpad and now we can see what our camera is doing so let's move it a little bit closer and i guess i need to add a little bit of tint here like this yeah so this will be my camera setup and one thing uh one small thing we need to add is an empty why we need an empty empty will allow us to manipulate with these two objects by dragging only one object so let's select the frank let's set the leg select the ellipsoid and select the empty last ctrl p object now we can select only empty move it rotate it and do whatever you want with it and it will be affected on both of our objects great uh, so let's go to the camera and the lighting again go here and turn the strange of your light to zero and now we have completely dark environment not here we need it here so if you have the whole black stuff press ctrl b and select the camera like this okay let's add an light it's my favorite stuff and i'm bad at it gz like this rotate it slightly I'll show you the setup that I'll use for this animation, but it's always up to you how you're lighting up your scene. Let's duplicate the by pressing Shift D, Alt G, Alt R, R Y 90, G X like this, and this will be kind of standard three point lighting technique that everybody told you and you may heard about it every time so let's turn the main light for now to see better what's happening with our side light i think this will be our key light yeah and the first will be our fill light and we need to add one more let's duplicate the, this light again Rotate it like this, scale it up with S and X, S and X, move it right here, S, X, scale, scale, scale a lot, disabled our two first lights. So, what I'm trying to achieve here right now, I wanted to, I want this light to be sort of a ring light for the back faces or hairs here so you better watch a uh, lighting tutorial videos about lighting in general not about it 3d to get a better understanding of what i'm trying to achieve i think video lighting first videos with ben is the best one so i want it looks like this and maybe we can move our plane closer and we need to correct our lighting here like this and let's make it a little bit not that bright might be f5 yep something something like this and for this one let's a little bit correct it
I think uh, we can move it a little bit more after adding in materials. So let's do it right now. Go to the material type properties here. And we already have some materials with Frank, so let's add him uh, some colors. So I, I like this kind of pinky gummy color. Yeah. So if you zoom in, you can see the gaps between the layers. And if you are hiding the cylinder, you will be see the back faces. So our cylinder kind of fill up our object inside. And we also need add the same color to our cylinder. Yep. Uh, for this for this scene, let's and in podium, let's also add this color, but create a new one and slightly let's make it slightly different. I think some. Think like this will be awesome. So let's go through our lightning quickly. Move it up here and there. Okay. Oops. I'm accident I'm hiding it. Alt H. Yeah. So So I guess I will stop putting my lightning up here and let's go to the next part, animation. For the animation, what I'm trying to do here is kind of make a face reveal for friend. Let's select an empty and rotate it 180. Yeah. Also let's step on the zero frame and make a keyframe here. I location, I rotation for the empty. Now let's go to the last frame and rotate our head for 360. Yes. Press I rotation or we can just press a value. So now our head will be kind of revealed from hairs to the face and back to the hairs. So it already looks like an animation, but it's kind of boring and we will speed it up a little bit. So press C here and make all the keyframes linear. Yep. I want this to be fast, then slow, then again fast, fast, slow, fast. How can we achieve it? Let's go to the frame 60, make I available. Let's go maybe on the frame 30, I available. And now we need to move these keyframes, this for example here, and this for example here 75 and this for 15. So let's see how it turned out. Slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. Let's move it a little bit closer. So something like this. Slow, fast, slow, fast. Kind of slow mo effect, yeah. and 
for here I maybe want to add another keyframe and kind of speed it up at the end so fast and slow yeah now it's kind of slowing on the back again and go fast at the start I'm not a pro at the animation but I'm trying my best to explain you what I got here and let's take a look at the take a look at the graph editor here so let's again move your mouse on the timeline press a t linear and the, and the graph editor a, a normalize and numpad and period k on the numpad to kind of see everything let's hide everything except rotation so the basic stuff the more vertical these lines the more faster the animation will be the more horizontal the more slow so we need to understand here that at the beginning we go fast because it's grow up then we go slow because it's more like horizontal line then again fast and then again a little bit slow so fast slow fast slow maybe i want to move this somewhere here no So yes, that's it. Now we can render our animation. Let's go to the first frame, press render and render animation. That was it for animation and see you in the next chapter. Also guys forgot to mention that Blender by default will render your animation frame by frame in every pictures. So we need to open up folder with all these pictures, select all of them and drag them on some video editing software like for example DaVinci Resolve. And here we are, have our animation. And now I want to show you the modeling tree in SolidWorks with this model. And first of all I would like to say that I'm using SolidWorks because it performs much better than Fusion 360 with these vertical cuts and when I do this same operation in Fusion 360 I always got either or errors or strange results so that's why I choose SOLIDWORKS for this particular model let's go at this every beginning so I like to start my base modeling with adding some cylinder to understand the shape and the form after that i made a cat a cut sorry to represent kind of a face of our future friend also i add the fillets here add the axis to preparation and after that i'm add a one sphere here to make a hairs after that i decided to add the spiral like this and make a pattern with this spiral and make a circle pattern of this pattern all around the way and i got this uh, kind of strange form after that I decide to move some bodies around some blobs to make it more printable basically I select all these blobs I think this 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 and select and move them in inside to our model also all this body moving operation was done with a pair of Cura I saved the file in STL and go to the Cura slice it 
and just take a look all, on all the problematic spots. So I need to move these guys, these balls to the right, this to the left, this to the forward and etc. So after that I combine what I have here, how many bodies I have. And also I delete unnecessary, unnecessary bodies. Like maybe some hairs, I know, I don't know. I can see what's happening here. Oh yeah, I hide it. So there are some faces and bodies that I hide. And after that I just delete them. Delete them. Also I made a cut on the top and on the bottom to make the things looking flat. And also I rotate this main cylinder a little bit because I think it looks uh, nicer. After that I duplicate the hairs and scale them, them down for to make a cut for the hairs. So I make one cut like usual and making a pair, making a circular pattern. So you need to understand that face and hairs is different bodies. After that I delete unnecessary bodies that occurs during this operation and combine backward um, hairs and front one. After that I also move this face a little bit more rotated, kind of try, I'm trying to align it perfectly for the both sides of face. So make a first eye, move, move him somewhere, there, there, scale them, so it's kind of a basic operation. I make a cut, make a fillet, make another bulb here or sphere, after that I move it a little bit again and mirror it to have two eyes, then I make a nose, then I make a moustaches, one of them, add some fillets, move them around, also mirror them, and combine bodies that I wanted to cut, so I guess all the bodies except eyes. And then uh, usual operation, mm, copying the original body, scale it down, make a cut and make it a pattern. And adding the, some material on top and on the bottom to compensate this hole that you see previously. And that's it. That's how I create this friend guy in SolidWorks. See you later.